Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can troubleshoot a laptop that won't come on when you press the power button. This video is the third in this series where I take you through my step-by-step -step troubleshooting approach for scenarios like this. Now, needless to say that there are several possible reasons why your laptop may not boot up when you press the power button, from minor faults to major faults. Maybe nothing happens entirely when you press the power button, like in this case, or you get some indications of partial startup, maybe some LEDs blink, or you hear the cooling fan spinning, but nothing on the screen, or it tries to boot up but shuts down instantly. There are different kinds of signs you can have. So in this series, I try to present the different scenarios I come across, and then I take you through my thought process and the steps I take to check the different possible causes of this issue, and eventually how I manage to get the laptop to boot up again. I record these steps and share the successful ones or at least those that I feel can help you resolve your problems. So if the scenario I will cover in this tutorial doesn't fix your issue, then you can try the other tutorials I did in this series. I will add the links down in the video description. And now without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so today I have this HP EliteBook 840G5. It's an 8th gen Intel Core i5 processor, which is very decent. So when I plug this to power and press the power button, nothing happens. Nothing comes up on the screen. No backlights, no texts, no blinking LEDs, no light on the power button, no spinning sound from cooling fans, so absolutely nothing happens. Now in each of the videos in this series, I try to explain the role of the BIOS in coordinating the startup function on your laptop. The BIOS is short for Basic Input Output System, which is basically some kind of flash memory chip that comes embedded on your motherboard. It coordinates hardware initialization during startup and also provides other runtime services for your operating system and programs. Now, when you initially press the power button, it first powers up the BIOS, which then tries to find an operating system from the attached drives according to the preset boot order. So in this case, it could be that the power hasn't gotten to the BIOS at all, because usually when power gets to a functional BIOS chip, even if it's not yet able to communicate with the display to put out the state of the startup, or what could be wrong with the computer, or any other information, it would at least resort to some other means or clues, such as beeps or blinking LEDs, depending on the make and model of your computer. Now, in the initial video I did in this series, the laptop gave some beeps to indicate the state of the startup or what could be preventing the startup. This is a strong indicator. I've been expecting this, but I'm surprised it's coming this time. And this beep is coming from your BIOS. Now they are different. In the second scenario, we had a caps lock LED blinking. The first sign I noticed was the blinking of the caps lock LED. Now this laptop model has no cooling fan and it uses M.2. However, in this scenario, none of that happened. So my primary suspect here is power. It appears that power is not getting across to the BIOS to enable it issue some clues regarding the problem. Of course, I understand that the BIOS chip might also be dead or corrupt, but that is a more trivial issue to deal with. So before I think of that, I first try all the quick and easier tests, beginning with the power supply. So I'm going to test to ensure the power supply is working fine and that is delivering the right amount of power to the board. To that, I simply do a multimeter test. So I will unplug the power adapter and then carefully test to see if it works fine. I will set the multimeter to 200 volts DC. I guess I could also set it to 20 volts because most laptop chargers are rated between 18.5 to 20 volts DC. But either you set it to 20 or 200, that should work fine. Now here the polarity of the multimeter doesn't really matter, just pay attention to the numbers. So here I have minus 19.4 volts, which tells me that the charger is very likely working fine. I use the word likely here because there could be scenarios where the charger is putting out the rated power but still not making the proper contact, so we can't be too sure here yet. However, at least we can see that there is power on the charger. Now, considering that power is a very likely cause of the issue in this case, I'm being a bit more critical with all power-related components. So, upon inspecting the power adapter, I can see here that the outer sheath of the cable on the DC part is broken and has been pulled down from its position quite a bit. Now, while this is unlikely to be the issue, since the multimeter says the power adapter works fine, 
I will still use a replacement adapter just in case there is something going on in this area that is preventing proper power flow. Also, since I have a matching power adapter readily available. Now, generally, I try to eliminate any potential known issues, so I'll have less unknowns to deal with. So now that I have a more dependable adapter, I'll try to use it to see if that resolves the issue. Unfortunately, that wasn't the issue, so I will proceed with the next potential cause of the problem. Here, I will be discharging the motherboard of any residual power and also clearing the memory of any triggers that might have tripped off the laptop and has continued to prevent it from booting up. This is done by first removing all power sources from your laptop, both battery and AC source. Then press and hold down the power button for some 30 to 40 seconds and then release it. This discharges the motherboard of any residual voltage and clears your memory of any triggers that might have been tripped off to prevent the laptop from booting up again. Now return the battery and then try to power it on again. As you can see in this case that didn't resolve the problem either. Now one common cause of laptops not booting up as we saw in the first video of this series is dead RAM or broken RAM sockets. Now that will hardly be the issue here because there has been no sign of life at all. Usually when power gets to the BIOS then it would be able to put out some clues in the form of beeps or LED blinking to show a faulty RAM. But since I have the laptop already disassembled and the RAMs are easily accessible, I will go ahead and quickly remove the RAM modules one at a time to see if maybe one of the modules is bad. Not surprisingly, that wasn't the problem. Now, normally I would try to change the RAM modules or clean up the connectors and reseat them more firmly to ensure proper contact, but I'm not doing that here today because, like I said earlier, there has been no signal from the BIOS to suggest any issues with the RAM, so I wouldn't be doing more than just removing and testing them one at a time and then move to other possible tests. Here I will continue to check more on the power-related components and in that line, the next part of call would be the battery. Now this laptop as you can see is fairly new, it's an 8th gen Intel processor and hasn't been used for too long. In addition, the user hasn't reported any issues with the battery prior to this problem. But that notwithstanding, I will try to detach the battery and try to power up the laptop from only the power adapter to see if that makes any difference. Now I will advise doing this 30 seconds press to discharge residual power and clear trigger memories once again. This is because even after the component causing the power glitch is removed, that wouldn't change the state of the protective triggers. So always discharge after each change when dealing with power issues like this. And lo and behold, we now have some signs of life. I can see the LED is blinking. Let's wait and see if we'll get some message from the BIOS or if it boots up completely to the welcome screen. Yes, as you can see, the laptop seems to be coming up fine. Now, one thing I like to do when I find a likely cause like this is to reverse the state of the component and see if the problem returns. So I will put back the battery and see if that prevents the boot up again.
Now, as you can see, the laptop won't boot up again. So here we can conclude that the battery has some issues. Now, this is different from the battery being weak or dead because even a completely dead battery shouldn't stop a laptop from booting up. This is more likely a circuitry problem with the circuit board on the battery. So more than likely, a battery replacement will be required in this case. For the time, I would leave the battery disconnected from the board so the user can try to still make use of the laptop. And as you can see here, I still need to do this 30 seconds discharge after removing the battery. And that suggests that the battery is triggering one of the protective sensors, possibly the overcurrent protection, which causes the laptop to go into this non-start mode until after it's being discharged. Now, if you have a similar issue and you decide to change the battery, pay close attention to the model number and the ratings of the battery with regards to voltage. Also, the shape of the battery and the connector type has to match. Now, you don't have to pay much attention to the amps or the wattage because um, those just um, indicate the capacity of the battery. So, a bigger amp wouldn't be a problem. But the connector and the shape has to match, otherwise it won't fit into the system. And if the voltage is absolutely off, it might also cause more issues to your laptop. Also, if you choose to use the laptop without connecting the battery or while you wait for the new battery to arrive, you can either remove it completely from the laptop or use some non-conductive tape to isolate the connectors to avoid making unwanted contacts with other components on the board. Once again, there are several other possible reasons why you may experience this problem. So if this fix doesn't work for you, Check out the other videos in the series to see if any of them would help you out. And that is it for this tutorial. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and share with anyone you think might want to see. Drop us a comment if you have any questions or feedbacks. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for updates on future tech support videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. <laughs>